Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be using a couple different products from Lawn Fun. This first one is the Candy Corn add-on and it actually goes along with their How You Bean Doing stamp set where it has an empty jar and you can stamp jelly beans in it. Well, this is an add-on where you stamp the candy corn inside the jar. But instead of using that jar image today, I'm actually going to create a huge stack of candy corn. And because I'm going to be stamping this cluster of candy corn over and over again, I'm going to create a couple masks. I've got some masking paper inside my Misty stamp positioning tool, and then I've inked up that stamp with some black ink. Now this is the same black ink I'm eventually going to be using on my project, and I'm doing it this way because I don't want to have to clean off my stamp really well right away. And just by using the same type of ink, I won't have to worry about that. So I trimmed out the mask, and now I've got some white cardstock. This is some Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock, and I've cut it to be three inches wide by five and a half tall. I've mounted the greeting that I'm going to be using inside my Misty, and I'm gonna stamp this first because it's at the very top of the mound of candy corn, and I wanna make sure that there's plenty of room for the greeting, so I thought I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that first. And it says, I love you more than candy corn, and I really love candy corn. Well, here's a secret for you. I actually hate candy corn, but I love the look of candy corn, and I love how it's very, um, I mean, it's just traditional Halloween for the candy corn. I think it's just really fun. Personally, I don't enjoy the taste of candy corn, but I do enjoy the aesthetics of it. So I'm going to go ahead and co cover this first stamping with my mask and that's going to protect the edges that are around the, you know, the outer edges of this cluster while I stamp another cluster of candy corn right next to it. So I'm going to place that right there. Then I'm going to go ahead and stamp again. And for each one of these cluster stampings, I'm going to stamp it twice because I want a really like vibrant, stark, saturated line quality. I want this to be a really, really dark black. And I am going to be adding some Copic coloring, which is a really kind of seamless flat color. And so I don't want any like really sketchy black lines, if that makes sense. So at first I thought I would only need one mask, but I actually ended up making about two or three. And um, just so I didn't have to do even more, I did actually take the release paper from one of the masks and I started using that also, just because I needed to cover all of those edges so that I could get a really nice, big, huge mound of candy corn. So I'm going to continue stamping this, and like I said before, I'm stamping each one of these clusters twice because I want to make sure that the line quality is amazing. And this is one of those times when a misty stamp positioning tool is ideal for this, um, just because you can stamp over the same area twice. You don't have to try to line up that stamp once again and then try to get another stamp on top. So some of you, um, like in the past have asked, why are you using the Misty tool so much these days? And you know what? It's kind of become essential for some of the techniques and some of the uh, things that I do with my cards these days. Um, I think of all the different inventions that have come out over the years that have sort of revolutionized stamping and card making, I think the Misty stamp positioning tool is the, the biggest one. And I think a lot of you would agree, like in the comments below, tell me if you've used a Misty tool or if you want one or things like that. Um, I remember, and I still break out my compact stamp press every once in a while, but I remember um, almost feeling somewhat limited in what I could do because I couldn't stamp over that same area twice if that makes sense. So big props to Ileana over at My Petunia for her invention of the Misty tool, which is patented now and trademarked. I think it's kind of amazing. Um, just totally changed the game for paper crafting in general. So now I've got some Copic markers and I'm going to go ahead and, <coughs> excuse me, start coloring all of these candy corn. And don't worry, I'm not going to make you sit through all the coloring. I'm going to speed it up quite a bit and cut out a bunch. Um, but at this point, it looked like a bunch of um, Finding Nemo clownfish to me <laughs> with all, the, all of the orange and white. And then you bring in the yellow and it starts to look like candy corn. 
And I thought at first that I would only use these colors really flat and then just add a little bit of shadow with a BV00. Um, and so I did do that. I added a bunch of shading and it gave it just a little bit of dimension. And then I realized I just really wanted a more vibrant orange. So I did bring in another orange color, just a darker shade, which is YR18. And I used YR16 to kind of fade it out just a little bit. And by bringing in that darker shade, it really brought the image to life, I think. So I'm going to set this one aside and I'm going to work on the background. I'm taking some Nina Desert Storm cardstock and I'm using the, let's see, what is it called? The wood grain backdrop. I think it's called wood, stitched wood grain backdrop stamps or die from Lawn Fun. And I've run that through my Big Shot machine and now I'm going to take my tonic easy mat. I'm going to put that out so I have a silk surface. And I'm going to take some Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color Vintage Photo and sponge the color in on the edges. This really just emphasizes the texture that's been added to that cardstock, gives it more of an aged look. And I think it really lends itself to that wood texture that I'm creating. I have some more of that same cardstock. This is the 100 pound Desert Storm cardstock. And I'm going to put this inked and stitched background covering the entire front of the card. So I used some Tombow Extreme Adhesive for that. And then I adhered my candy corn piece on top. And I put quite a few strips of foam tape on the back. I'm using my grid mat here to help me line up my card and get that candy corn piece on there perfectly straight. Then I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to cut a notch, a little slit into the fold of this card. And this card design sort of <laughs> throws me back to years ago and I used to do this technique all the time because I'm never thinking ahead. I don't know where I want twine or ribbon or string and so I have to figure out a way to add it at the last minute. So this is how I add my string. I'm going to go ahead and thread it through the fold of the card and then I can tie it around and tie a bow. So it's a great way to add string at the last minute and to add a little bit of an organic feel, a little softer feel to this card that could otherwise seem quite stark because of the design here. So I'm trim off that string and then that is the card for today. Hope you guys enjoyed um, and let me know in the comments. Do you love candy corn? Do you hate candy corn? I think it's um, a very polarizing situation for Halloween. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you guys in a new video very soon. Mm -hmm.